George Armstrong Custer is a famous name in American history, even long after his death at the Battle of the Little Bighorn, where Lakota and Cheyenne warriors defeated him. Custer was born in New Rumley, Ohio, but he spent a big part of his early life in Monroe, Michigan. He wasn't the best student at West Point, and after graduating last in his class, he failed as an officer when he couldn't stop a fight between two cadets. He got into trouble, but escaped punishment because the Civil War needed officers. In the Civil War, Custer fought in the First Battle of Bull Run and did well in campaigns in Virginia and Gettysburg. His bravery in battle earned him respect, and his cavalry units helped push back Confederate General Robert E. Lee's forces. As a gift, General Philip Sheridan gave him the Appomattox Surrender Table. In 1866, Custer became a lieutenant colonel of the 7th Cavalry. He led campaigns against the Southern Cheyenne, but got in trouble again in 1867, leading to a year-long suspension. He came back in 1868 after his friend General Phil Sheridan helped him out. In 1868, Custer attacked Black Kettle's band by the Washita River, gaining favor with the army once more. In 1873, he skirmished with the Lakota in the Yellowstone area, and the next year, he led a big expedition to the Black Hills, land promised to the Lakota just six years earlier. In 1876, Custer was set to lead an anti-Lakota expedition with Generals John Gibbon and George Crook. He almost didn't make it because President Ulysses S. Grant was mad at him for exposing Indian service corruption. But popular opinion changed Grant's mind, and Custer headed west. The original plan was for Custer, Crook, and Gibbon to trap most of the Lakota and Cheyenne between them and defeat them. Custer rushed ahead and thought he found a big Indian village on June 25, 1876. But he didn't know that Crook had been stopped by Crazy Horse at Rosebud Creek. Thinking he was about to win, Custer attacked the Indian village. He split his forces, hoping fewer Indians would escape. This was a huge mistake. Thousands of Lakota, Cheyenne, and Arapaho warriors forced Custer's troops onto a ridge near the Little Bighorn, where they surrounded and killed all 210 of them. Custer's mistakes might have cost him his life, but they made him famous. His defeat at Little Bighorn turned him into a subject of songs, books, and paintings. His widow wrote about him, making him out to be a military genius and a cultured man. Paintings of Custer's last stand showed him as a brave victim, surrounded by hostile warriors. What often got forgotten was that he started the battle by attacking the Indian village, and most Indians surrendered within a year after their big win. 